In this section of histology, we're going to talk about connective tissues. Connective tissue is probably the most diverse type of tissue found in the human body. And the reason why connective tissue is so diverse is because of the functions that it performs. The first function of connective tissue is that it encloses and separates organs or organ systems. The second function is that connective tissue can connect or bind other tissues together. The third function is support and movement. The fourth function is that connective tissue can be used as storage for energy. The fifth function, connective tissue can be used as a cushion or insulation. The sixth function, connective tissue can be used as a means of transport. The seventh function is protection. And finally, the last function of connective tissue is that it can form structures. Connective tissue is composed of two things. The first thing are cells, and the second is called extracellular matrix. So let's take a closer look at the different types of cells found in connective tissue. Connective tissue cells are named according to their functions. And based on their functions, connective tissue cells can end in the suffix blast, site, or clast. A connective tissue cell ending in blast produces matrix. A connective tissue cell that ends in site is a mature cell that maintains the matrix. And finally, a connective tissue cell that ends in clast destroys matrix or breaks down matrix. Examples of connective tissue cells include the following. A fibroblast, a fibrocyte, and a fibroclast. Fibroblasts produce fibers. A fibrocyte maintains fibers. And a fibroclast will destroy or break down fibers. Another example of connective tissue cells are the osteoblast, osteocyte, and osteoclast. An osteoblast produces bone, an osteocyte maintains bone, and an osteoclast destroys or breaks down bone. And the last example of connective tissue cells would be a chondroblast, a chondrocyte, and a chondroclast. A chondroblast is a type of cell that produces cartilage. A chondrocyte is a cell that maintains cartilage, and a chondroclast is a cell that destroys or breaks down cartilage. There are other types of cells found in connective tissue that have special functions, two of which we'll discuss in this lecture. The first cell is called a mast cell. A mast cell plays a role in the inflammatory response by secreting a substance called histamine, which acts as a vasodilator. The second special cell found within connective tissue is called a macrophage. A macrophage is a white blood cell or leukocyte. It's produced by the cardiovascular system, but is part of the immune system because it engulfs foreign substances. Think of a macrophage as a little Pac-Man. It's going around and looking for things to eat. The second part of connective tissue is called the extracellular matrix, and it's the composition of the extracellular matrix that distinguishes each type of connective tissue. And there are three components of extracellular matrix. The first component of extracellular matrix are the protein fibers. The second component is an organic ground substance. And the last component is water or fluid. Let's take a closer look at the first component, which are protein fibers. Remember, protein fibers are produced by a specific type of cell called a fibroblast. Fibers are maintained by a fibrocyte, and fibers are broken down by a fibroclast. There are three types of protein fibers. The first type of protein fiber is called collagen. Collagen are white fibers that are found in bundles, and these fibers, because they're in bundles, resist tensile forces or stretching forces. The second type of protein fiber is elastic fiber. Elastic fibers are yellow and have the ability to stretch and recoil. And finally, the last type of protein fiber are reticular fibers. Reticular fibers are fibers that help anchor structures within the connective tissue. The second component of extracellular matrix is something called organic ground substance. Organic ground substance is the stuff between the cells and fibers. This stuff is usually clear, colorless, and some sort of a viscous fluid or a jelly-like substance. However, organic ground substance can also be composed of minerals, such as that found within bone, or it can be a fluid, such as the plasma in blood. 
And the last component of extracellular matrix is fluid, in which cells and fibers are suspended. As mentioned before, connective tissue is so diverse because it can come in three different forms, solid, semi-solid, or a liquid. And it's the ratio of fibers, organic ground substance, and fluids which makes connective tissue so diverse. Let's look at an illustration of connective tissue and see if we can clarify the composition of connective tissue. Connective tissue is made up of cells and extracellular matrix. An extracellular matrix is made up of protein fibers, organic ground substance, which is the stuff found between cells and fibers, and fluid, in which cells and fibers are suspended in. There are five types of connective tissue, and remember, the type of connective tissue is determined by the composition of its extracellular matrix. The first type of connective tissue is called loose areolar connective tissue. The second type of connective tissue is called dense fibrous connective tissue. The third is cartilage, the fourth is bone, and the last connective tissue is blood. The first type of connective tissue is loose areolar connective tissue. And the reason why I call this loose connective tissue is because the fibers are so spread apart from one another. Loose areolar connective tissue is composed mostly of collagen fibers with very few elastic fibers. The type of cells that you would find would be a fibroblast or a fiber making cell and it's located between glands, nerves, muscles, skin. The primary function of loose areolar connective tissue is to separate, connect other tissues, or support other tissues. A special type of loose areolar connected tissue is adipose tissue. Adipose tissue consists of cells filled with lipid, or fat. You can find adipose tissue below the skin, around the kidneys, or within the mammillary glands. The primary function of adipose tissue is to serve as a cushion, as insulation, and to store energy. The next type of connective tissue is a dense fibrous connective tissue. And depending on which anatomy physiology textbook you are using, dense fibrous connective tissue can be categorized in different ways. One way of categorizing dense fibrous connective tissue is by the type of fibers found within that connective tissue. For instance, you could have dense collagenous connective tissue, or you could have dense elastic connective tissue. For this lecture, I'm going to categorize dense fibrous connective tissue by the directions that the fibers run. Using this categorization, dense fibrous connective tissue can be categorized as dense regular connective tissue or dense irregular connective tissue. In dense regular connective tissue, the fibers of this connective tissue are parallel to one another and the fibers that you could find within dense regular connective tissue are collagen and elastic fibers. The reason why we call dense fibrous connective tissue dense is because all of the fibers are tightly packed together. Examples of dense regular connective tissue are tendons and ligaments. A dense fibrous connective tissue is categorized as dense irregular connective tissue if the fibers run in different directions, in other words, if the fibers do not run parallel to one another. Again, dense irregular connective tissue consists of collagen and elastic fibers and can be found as part of the skin. The third type of connective tissue is cartilage. The type of cell that you would find in cartilage is a chondrocyte, which is a mature cell that maintains cartilage. Cartilage is what we call an avascular tissue, which means it lacks a direct blood supply. And because it lacks a direct blood supply, cartilage heals very slowly. There are three types of cartilage. Highland cartilage, fibrocartilage, and elastic cartilage. The first type of cartilage is called highland cartilage. Highland cartilage is very durable, very tough and strong. It has a glossy, white, smooth surface which can be found at ends of bones, such as within joints. It can also be found in the nose, the trachea, and larynx. The second type of cartilage is fibrocartilage. This type of cartilage is very pliable, very squishy. You can find this type of cartilage in between vertebrae as the intervertebral discs, and you can find it between the two pubic bones within the pubic symphysis. And finally, the last type of cartilage is elastic cartilage. Elastic cartilage is very flexible. You can bend it, stretch it, and it will return back to shape. 
An example of elastic cartilage is the outer structure of the ear. The next type of connective tissue is the hardest connective tissue, bone. Bone is very rigid and sturdy. It's made by osteoblasts and maintained by osteocytes. Bone is composed of two different types of minerals, calcium and phosphate. Bone makes up the skeleton of the skeletal system and provides several functions such as for support and protection. Bone will be discussed in more detail in future lectures. And finally, the last type of connective tissue is the only type of connective tissue that is a fluid found within the body, and this is blood. Blood is composed of two parts, a solid part, or the cells, and a liquid part called the plasma. The different types of cells found within blood are the red blood cells, the white blood cells, and platelets. Blood is part of the cardiovascular system, and its primary function is to transport nutrients or waste products and to connect other systems to one another. Again, blood will be discussed in more detail in future lectures. Here is an illustration of all the different types of connective tissues and how each of these connective tissues interacts with one another. For your next class meeting, be ready to discuss the following. How do the three forms of connective tissue, solid, semi-solid, and liquid, determine the overall function of the connective tissue?